Put your hands together for Joe Kilgallen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. How's everyone doing? Yeah? Good to see everyone. Merry Christmas. Did everyone have a good Christmas? You got all the cool toys you wanted, all that shit? Everyone have a good Hanukkah? When the fuck is Hanukkah? Does anyone know when that actually happens? I have a lot of Jewish friends in comedy, they don't even know. I see Happy Hanukkah, they go, dude, I don't think it's right now. I don't know when it is. I love Jewish people, I don't get them. You make all the movies in Hollywood, not one fucking Hanukkah movie. There's, I mean, Adam Sandler made one 20 years ago. That's it, right? Wouldn't we all like to see the Goldberg family, you know, just freaking out because they left little Stuart behind or whatever a Jewish name is? Right, Saul, they left little Saul behind and he's got to fend off some criminals. That'd be great. Instead you had some rich suburban Mick, right? Yeah, it's not as much fun. I could say that, I could drop the M word, I'm Irish, it's fine. I do, I love my Jewish friends though. I love Christmas, it's a good time of year. Right, everyone's happy for the most part, or it's baked, whatever, that works too. I remember being a kid, like things are different with social media now. Just take a picture of your cool toys, put it on Instagram. Used to be you to call your buddy up, you ever have that friend? calls you up like fucking noon on Christmas day. It's like, dude, I got a family. I can't be talking to you, you know? <laughs> and you're all happy. You're like, hey man, I got the new Jurassic Park toy. I got that T-Rex. It's like, oh yeah, did you get the big one or the medium sized one? <laughs> it's like, ah, I think I got the medium sized one. He's like, yeah, well my dad loves me more apparently. <laughs> and I'm nine, so I'm like, you mean Santa? What are you fucking saying right now, man? What are you saying? Get a little heartbroken as a kid. Last Christmas, I was hanging out at a bar with a bunch of my friends. We're all having a good time. And uh, this girl was a little drunk, so she was, you know, chatting away. She tells us, she goes, I gave my parents the greatest Christmas gift a daughter could give her parents. On Christmas morning, I woke up and I said, Mom and Dad, my gift to you is this. I'm going to quit smoking. That's my gift to you. And there was people around us who were actually like, aw, what a sweet <laughs> gift. But I'm thinking to myself, if I'm her dad, I'm like, <laughs> where's my real wrapped in a box fucking present? Because... <laughs> That is not a gift, okay? You can't give up something shitty about yourself and pass it off as a gift. Also, you're like 34. What the fuck is this as a gift? I had to put up with years and years of popsicle stick arts and crafts. And you're giving up a vice? That's what you're doing? What are you gonna give us for our birthday? You stop blowing random dudes for our birthday? What the fuck are you doing? What's gonna happen on Valentine's Day when you get your heart broken and you start puffing away at cigarettes again, huh? Do I get that fucking Applebee's gift card I wanted originally? Do I get that fucking thing? Do I get to have some apps, you fucking horrible daughter, right? You guys are thinking I'm angry. No, she's a shitty daughter. She deserves to be speak to like this. Treated as such. I've had a big year. I'm really happy to be back home in Chicago. I moved to Los Angeles recently. It's a lot of fun. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Great city. Well, I got married a little over a year ago. It's another big thing in my life. Yeah, right? I got married. She's awesome. I'm a very lucky man. She's beautiful. She's a nurse. She likes baseball. Her thighs don't touch. It's fucking great, you know? That joke does not fly in Wisconsin, by the way. That does... Whew. First told that there, and you want to see women hate a woman they've never met before. Just mention, mention thighs not touching, and they will fucking hate her. She's great. We've had, a good, we've had a good start to our marriage. Went to Hawaii for our honeymoon. That was the big, the kickoff event, the honeymoon. Hawaii is amazing. How many people here have been to Hawaii? All right, a few of you. A few of you. The rest of you are poor. That's fine. Just, you know, work a little harder. I don't know what to tell you, right? Maybe don't spend all your money on comedy shows. I don't know. Maybe just save up. Go to paradise. Hawaii is amazing. Everyone here, you owe it to yourself to go to Hawaii before you die. You do. Because it really is the paradise it's cracked up to be. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful, there's no excuse for being an asshole. All right? It's too nice to be a jerk. You know, like, I can't imagine domestic abuse exists in the state of Hawaii. It can't happen. No Hawaiian guys ever came home from a rough day at work, kicked his door and been like, this place is a fucking mess. These kids are out of control. What's for dinner, huh? Fresh pineapple and rum? That's awesome. Why would I be upset about that? We're going we're gonna to have that every day. I'm cool with that, babe. That's a great combo. Can't be mad at you. What do you say after dinner we go to the beach and watch dolphins fuck? Huh? Let's do that. We live here. It's too nice. The one knock I heard about Hawaii from a lot of people were like, 
oh, dude, yeah, Hawaii's great and all, but it's super expensive. You know, they're trying to, like, you know, ruin my Hawaiian experience by telling me, oh, it's super expensive. I'm like, um, yeah, that's because it's awesome. <laughs> that's how the economy works. Things that are really great tend to cost a lot of money. Yeah, you know what's real cheap? Indiana, real cheap. <laughs> You know why? Because it fucking sucks. That's why. It's awful. Sorry if I chose the view of a beach over the view of fucking poverty. Sorry if that's where I was going with this. Hawaii's amazing. The people are fantastic. Hawaiian dudes are crazy because they're on two extremes. Like, Hawaiian guys either look like a sumo wrestler or they look like an Abercrombie model, right? There's just no in-between. They either look like they want to cut up a pig or fuck your wife, right? There's just no in-between. Hard to trust them, a lot of fun. I got a reality check for what a psycho I am, though. I'm, I'm a little crazy. You're going to soon learn a lot about that. I got a, a little bit of a nutbag temper. I, uh, w when we were in Hawaii, we were on a boat, and we saw a bunch of wild dolphins, like 30 of them. I, it, was, it was incredible. Right? I mean, even the toughest guy, you look like a tough dude. You see a dolphin, you're going to lose your shit. They're just too awesome, right? The biggest, toughest guy, be like, oh my God, it's a dolphin, right? You just freak out. They're just, they're majestic. And these dolphins were amazing. They just started doing backflips out of the water, you know? Nobody paid them, nobody offered them anything. They did it for love, you know? They're, they're a great fish or mammal, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. But I realized what a psycho I was because I was leaning over the boat and watching them like everybody else. The one dolphin comes right out of the water and just splashed the shit out of me. You know, which is not a big deal, but then everyone on the boat starts laughing at me. Then I look at the dolphin. The dolphin is laughing at me. So I lose my shit. I'm like, hey, asshole dolphin, I got a fucking cell phone in my pocket, you moron. What you think about what you're doing, huh? Let's keep the water in the pool, you stupid idiot. I'm gonna take this plastic ring off the six pack and I'm gonna chuck it at your stupid dolphin face. Yeah, you'll drown in it because you're dumb. No, so smart, you can't avoid plastic in the fucking water, idiot. I was not the most popular guy in the boat after that. People don't like you when you yell at dolphins. You don't. I am an animal lover, though. Love animals. I do, we got a little puppy. It's great. My wife and I got this puppy. We adopted her or whatever, you know. We just, we, we took her. We, we did. We said, we, we, we will take that one. She's amazing. I love this dog. So much energy. She's a lab boxer. Cute as hell. You know, oh, man, she's, she's so great. But she's got a lot of energy. And, you know, some of my friends are like, dude, your dog's hyper. Ton of energy. And some of my friends know that my wife and I would like to have a kid one day soon. And I was like, well, there won't be a problem, right? And some of my friends are getting me paranoid. They're like, dude, what if your dog and your baby don't get along? And I'm like, well, that would really suck to have to get rid of a baby, okay? Because I'm not getting rid of that goddamn dog. All right, I, I love that fucking dog, okay? I taught that dog how to do a double high five in midair. That fucking dog's not going anywhere, all right? The dog stays. I don't even know this baby. This baby could be an asshole in the making. I don't know. It could be a future prick. The dog and the baby better figure some shit out, all right? Because one of them's going. I will take that baby to an orphanage. I don't know if those exist anymore, to be honest with you. I will drop it off at a firehouse. And we will do it that way, because the fucking dog stays. That dog cheers me up. I'll be yelling at a sports game on TV. The dog will jump on my lap, start licking my face. It's great. I'm gonna live longer. Baby could be a pain in the ass. I have no idea. It's weird when you get married, because the first question is always, when are you gonna have kids? And it's one thing when it's family, but like random people, you barely know, when are you gonna have kids? I like to piss those people off. That's my favorite thing. I do, I like to be like, oh yeah, the wife and I talked about it. Never, we're never gonna have kids. We figured you were a kid once and we don't want someone to turn out as shitty as you. So, we're not gonna participate. Yeah, we're gonna sit that one out. I do wanna have kids, I do wanna have kids. I think kids are great, you know? Uh, I actually think because we have this great puppy that we're gonna be well prepared. I'm actually gonna go so far as to say that I think raising a dog, a puppy in particular, from the time it's born up to about six or eight months in that span is way more difficult than raising a baby from six to eight months. Now, I know there's a lot of moms in the crowd, and I know you're thinking, oh, you're fucking wrong, right? I know, I can already see it in your eyes. You're wrong, wait until you have a child, all that kind of bullshit, right? But you're not thinking it through. Puppies are mobile. They can move immediately. I want all you women to imagine the delivery room scenario. 
you give birth to a baby and all of a sudden it's fucking running around the goddamn room. It's just running around immediately. Imagine that crazy shit. You, the mom, you're gonna look at the father and be like, what is it? You're gonna be like, I don't fucking know. It's on all fours. I don't know if there's a dick or a vagina. I don't know. But someone cut the goddamn cord. For the love of God, it's running around the room. Why is it sniffing the floor? It's sniffing the floor. Those kind of cute. It's sniffing the floor. Oh my God, it's taking a huge shit. Someone quick get some paper towels. And then as soon as you go to clean that up, it's chewing on your iPhone charger and you're losing your fucking mind. Like, why did we do this? Why did we do this to ourselves? Babies can't move at all. They're way easier. You know, they can't even hold up their stupid fucking heads for the first eight or nine months. You know what I mean? Dogs, you have to watch constantly because they're going to run around and shit on everything, you know? And they're not in diapers. Babies, you got them in the best night, you're playing Xbox. Yeah, you're still breathing. I can keep fucking playing, right? I don't, I don't, yeah, you're all shaky a little bit. Well, we're breathing, you know? It's fine. We just we can do two things at once. I'm sure kids are difficult, though. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? I just... Here's the thing I'm worried about. You got a lot of things you're worried about as a parent, but I, I, I don't think I'm ready yet to have a child because I'm still, like you guys heard, I yelled at dolphins, okay? I'm still, I'm a little bit of a psycho. And I think it's important to take care of your personality before you start raising babies, before you start having kids. You gotta take care of yourself. You know, I'm the type of guy that likes to think, t I take things too far. Let me repeat that, we'll edit that so it sounds better. It's a beautiful thing about a recording, right? I could just, I love talking to the future. Because people are going to listen to this on CD later. I'm going to call it right now. The, pa the Patriots are beating the Packers in the Super Bowl. I'm going to call that right now. That way when you listen to this on the album, you're going to be like, he was fucking right. I'm hedging my bets. But no, I like to take things too far. Right? I go over the top. You know how guys like to mess with each other? You know, you mess with your boys and stuff like that. One of my friends will say to me, hey, Joe, nice shoes. And I'll be like, ha, your mom's a whore. Yeah. Yeah, don't talk about my shoes. Yeah, I know I could have made fun of your shirt next. I wouldn't write for your mom because she's a stupid whore. And she raised an asshole who makes fun of nice shoes. You're stupid. I fucking hate you. That's, that's taking things too far. You can't, you can't raise kids when you still have that mindset. Because as we all know, little kids say mean things to their parents. They say mean things. I'm afraid I'm going to some little five-year-old look up at me and be like, I hate you, daddy. And I'm going to be like, yeah? Well, you were $450 away from not existing. Okay? <laughs> So why don't you go to bed when Papa says to go to bed? How about that, all right? You were this close, okay? I didn't have the money then, but you were this close. So why don't you go to fucking bed? I've noticed some people are a little offended by that joke. I, uh, I just want to say I'm assuming you're offended because it no longer costs $450. And the inaccuracy is what offends you about the joke, okay? Because it's 2014, I thought a little more pro-choice. It's also fictitious. No child was actually hurt during that show. Just want to make that very clear at the moment. My big fear also is that, like, I'm gonna try my hardest to raise a good kid, because I think that's important. Because every time we see a human being that sucks, we just think, oh God, I bet they had terrible parents. I bet they had shitty parents, right? That's what we always assume. But I'm sure somewhere, there's gotta be some parents that did their best, but their kid still ends up being a fucking asshole, right? <laughs> And I'm, afra I'm afraid that's gonna happen to me. I'm gonna do my heart, I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna try my hardest, you know? I'm gonna put all my energy into raising a great kid. But knowing me, I'm still gonna end up with some fucking idiot who's gonna end up failing eighth grade algebra. And then my wife's gonna be like, well maybe we should send him to a private school. And I'm gonna be like, well there goes my goddamn season tickets. All because I didn't pull out 14 years ago and now I'm stuck with this fucking moron who can't add letters. I mean, Jesus Christ, why did we get into this shit? You know, we were having fun. You tried some new move from Cosmo. I had a leg cramp I couldn't pull out. And now we're dealing with this idiot. Dude, A plus B, C or whatever. I failed eighth grade algebra too. I know where you get it from, son. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Sorry I made it difficult. Think about that stuff. Here's something I believe we could all agree on. We could all get together on. I believe that there are no bigger scumbags on the planet Earth than deadbeat dads. No bigger scumbags, right? We can all agree on that. No bigger scumbags. How do you have a child and then walk out on that child? You know? It's like, what if that kid becomes famous? Right? Like, how dumb does Eminem's dad have to feel? Right? How dumb does that guy have to feel? 
Famous rapper Eminem, we all know his dad left him when he was just a baby. That guy's got to feel like the biggest moron in the world right now. He's probably working in some piece of shit Michigan warehouse somewhere. All of his friends give him a hard time at lunch, as they should, right? <laughs> just like, hey, Mr. Mathers, Mr. Mathers, um, you, uh, you talked to your son recently? No, no, you haven't talked to him? Okay, okay. Well, I just heard him on the radio, and uh, he says you're a cocksucker. That's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> For like eight albums in a row, he's been saying that shit. Yeah, like 20 songs. What, you didn't know the kid could rhyme before you walked out on him forever? Nice parenting. Should have read to him, how about that? Here's a little side note. I love Eminem, big Eminem fan. But dude, you gotta calm down, bud. You gotta relax. Have you heard Eminem's latest album? He's still angry in every song. It's like, you're worth $150 million. Relax. Nobody's taking Haley. Okay? Just... Child Services has given up on that fight. All right, you won. Just take it easy. She's like 28 now, too, by the way. She's fine. And leave Dr. Dre alone. He's got headphones money. He doesn't need you at the moment, okay? He's like 70. Just let him relax. You bothered him enough. Here's another example of a horrible deadbeat dad. LeBron James' father. LeBron James' father. Look, whether you like him or not, you gotta admit, LeBron James is an amazing basketball player. He's great. His dad left him when he was 18 months old. So I've gotta ask this question. How do you walk out on an 18-month-old baby that already has a size seven shoe? How do you, how do you do that? You didn't, see, you didn't see a future there, really? You didn't wanna hang out, assess the situation a little bit further? Little Bron Bron's doing windmill dunks on a play school rim, you didn't wanna. No one's saying stay with his mom, just drive the kid to practice, you know? There's a contract coming. Read the writing on the wall. I mean, say what you will about Michael Jackson's dad being a psycho, but at least he was there. Yeah, that's right. Crazy Joe Jackson stuck around. He literally beat success into his kids. That's right, and if you think about it, all of Michael, Jan Michael Jackson's dance moves, all of MJ's dance moves, he's playing defense. <laughs> he gets that from the old man. He's all, they're defensive dance moves. They're all like, back up, Papa. <laughs> right, they're all, <laughs> protect the balls, right? He's gotta cover the nuts. They're all a lot, a lot, of, a lot of kicks, a lot of like. For those of you listening to the CD, I just did some sick fucking MJ moves, okay? Come to a goddamn live show. You'll appreciate it. Some really great MJ moves. That's what's fun about doing a CD. I didn't even shower today. This is great. Nobody knows this isn't on film. If only you guys knew how much farting I was doing before I took this stage. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I was just really gassy. And people ask me, like, do you get nervous before shows? I'm like, no, I don't get nervous, but apparently my asshole gets very nervous. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> this is fun, though. I, uh, I, like, I, I, like, um, I like basketball. I'm a big basketball fan. I mentioned LeBron James, huge NBA fan. I, um, growing up in Chicago, of course, I'm a fan of the greatest basketball player of all time. And that's not LeBron James. Sorry, but it's Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. I love that man. Love him. People will try to like bring me down a little bit. Like, you know, I go across the country. I got a lot of friends from all over the place and they'll try to tell me, hey Joe, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in real life, Michael Jordan is not a good guy. Yeah, Michael Jordan's kind of a jerk in real life. Do you still love him? Is he still your hero? And I'm always like, six championships. I don't give a shit. I'm not asking to babysit my kids, all right? Six titles. I could walk in on Michael Jordan fucking my wife and I would not care. I wouldn't care. I'd walk in, I'm like, how's he, babe? How's MJ? How's he doing? He's got that tongue thing going on. Is he using his tongue? God damn it, I love you, Jordan. Fucking love you, man. Dude, after you're done, I want you to sign my dick. I want you to sign my dick. I want a two on this ball, three on that ball. Fuck, you made my life awesome growing up. Damn, you're amazing. 10 scoring titles, right? It's amazing. I know some of you are probably thinking, come on, Joe. 
If you walked in on Michael Jordan having sex with your wife, you'd be furious. Maybe I would. Maybe I would be mad. Maybe I'd kick that door open and be like, what the fuck, Jordan? Get the hell off my wife, MJ. Get the fuck off her. And then he looks at me and goes, dude, you giving me the shrug? Like against Portland? <laughs> you just gave me the shrug? God, you're amazing. Dude, how'd you do that? Six three-pointers and one half? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. You're the best, man. You're the fucking best, dude. Five MVPs on rail. God. You think when Jordan makes a woman come, he walks out of the room with a fist pump, just holding that? Just, just, that's how he exits the room. Just like one fist pump in the air. Does the fucking jump man as he, you know. Guy's the best. I love him, man. I'm, I'm really into sports. I am. I, I, I just think we're a little nutty with it sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, my favorite example of how crazy we were with sports was the whole Tiger Woods thing. Remember that a couple years ago? People were all like, oh, Tiger Woods. Oh, can you believe what a disgrace. CNN, so-called world leader in news, they had a poll question. Their poll question was this, will America forgive Tiger Woods? And believe this, 70% of the people said no, America wouldn't forgive Tiger Woods. So are you fucking kidding me? Think of all the athletes who have done far worse that we've forgiven. Far worse, right? Michael Vick. Michael Vick killed like 65 dogs in a country where people like dogs better than their actual family, right? <laughs> Three years ago, he was my starting quarterback. I won my fantasy championship. I'm not gonna apologize. All right, I'm not gonna apologize, all right? Team Spicy Dick had a great year, and I'm not gonna apologize. Like we, I, I won a lot of money, and you know. Who else? Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was a starting middle linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. He won two Super Bowls. In his last season, his jersey was number two in sales. Number two. Ray Lewis fucking killed a guy. He killed somebody. Number two in sales. Mike Tyson, let's think about Mike Tyson. Former heavyweight champion of the world. Raped a girl. He's a convicted rapist. He was the star of the Hangover Trilogy, America's biggest comedy blockbusters. All was forgiven there, right? What did Tiger Woods do wrong? Bang 12 cocktail waitresses? Guess what, everyone's grandfather here is bang 12 cocktail waitresses. It was called wartime, and we're a better country for it, okay? Yeah. Show some pride, America. I like my generation, I do, but I think we overrate everything. We do, we overrate stuff. Like, it's weird, because we have the best technology, but we just dwell on things that aren't new. Beards, can we shut the fuck up about beards? Look, I know there's a lot of people here with beards and you're proud of your beards, but they're not what they used to be. I know a lot of people are like, dude, we've got this cool manly beard. Beards aren't manly anymore. When assholes in skinny jeans who were riding freaking hand-me-down Schwins started, started rocking beards. Yeah, not as cool. They're not that cool anymore, sorry. When guys who wear nine backpacks, six of them fold with comic books, have beards, kind of ruin beards, don't they? Yeah, they're not so cool, right? Look, I can't grow a beard, so I really fucking hate you people, okay? I'm jealous. I'll own up to that, I'm jealous. They look like red wood chips when I try to. It looks like stupid. It's a bummer. What else? Here's another thing we overrate. Brunch. You ever hear people talk about brunch? Oh, you know a good brunch spot? I know a good brunch spot. Where are you going for brunch? We should do brunch on Saturday and Sunday. They talk about brunch like it's brand new. Listen, people have been having French toast at one o'clock for a long time. It's not new. Five-year-olds do it. It's not special. It's like, just get over it. My all-time favorite, though, is the phrase hard-earned money. That is the most overused phrase in America. We're all guilty of using it. I use it sometimes. The phrase hard-earned money. Me and my hard-earned money. I can't spend my hard-earned money. Can we stop pretending like every dime we make was the most back-breaking dime ever accomplished? <laughs> Can we stop with that? Because I guarantee everyone here has had a day at work where you look back at the clock and you're like, I didn't do a goddamn thing today, did I? <laughs> yeah, if I recap this entire day, I just kind of stared out that window for what felt like four and a half hours. <laughs> Played on Facebook for a little bit, took a hefty dump, and yeah, I think I earned that paycheck. And, and don't feel bad about that. Don't. Don't feel bad when you slack off at work, because when you slack off, you're actually helping the economy. You are, if you think about it. 
Because everybody who works like an eight hour, especially a desk job, like an office job, when you work an eight hour shift, you're really only working about an hour 45, right? <laughs> the rest of the day, you're just kind of wandering around the hall. I thought I had a pen. Did anyone see my pen? <laughs> I, I swear there was a pen. I don't know why I keep losing my pens. <laughs> you know, it's not real work. So don't feel bad about that. Next time you're at the office, slow it down. Take your time. Mike's got to feed his dumb kids too, right? We just got to take our time with this. That's the thing, like, because if everybody worked the hardest, every business would only need, like, one employee. That's all they would need. People would be getting fired left and right because you're a go-getter, you know? Think about your fellow man. And if you're really smart about it, or woman, if you're really smart about it, always, and I do mean always, take a shit at work. You got to take a shit at work. Some of you are looking at me like, that's gross. No, you're not thinking it through. You take a dump at work because you're on the clock. So you're, in theory, getting paid to take a dump. And that, my friends, is the American dream right there. That's what that is. That's right. We got brave men and women fighting overseas for your right to drop some thunder at the office. So why don't you just put that ass on the porcelain, grab those thighs, and let it fly, all right? Let's do it for the flag, you know? Back when I worked a 9 to 5 job, I would always take a shit at 10.30 and then one at 2.30. That way lunch was like halftime. You know what I mean? You just break your day into four quarters right there. After that 2.30 dump, I just took a knee and ran out the clock at that point. You're just, you're home free. You're almost there. You're almost there. Did everyone have, there was an election recently. Did everyone have a good time on the election day? That, that's a great way to fucking, that's a great way to annoy a crowd. Bringing up politics. I like talking about politics. Not as much as I used to. I used to be into them. Now I just like, you know, like getting people all riled up. Like, I'm that guy at a party at like 3 a.m. and I'll be all like, FDR was the greatest president of all time. If you disagree with me, fuck you, right? I'm just I like starting debates at 3 a.m. drunk off my ass. That's fun for me. I like people get all upset about elections and stuff. We gotta start listening to what they're saying though. I don't, I'm not trying to tell anyone who to vote for who, but like, we gotta listen, right? Because they manipulate everyone. Like I heard this one woman in the last election I couldn't remember who she was talking about, but she's like, I think it was like Mitch McConnell. She's like, I'm voting for Mitch McConnell because he's pro-family. And I like my candidates to be pro-family. Which leads me to ask this question. Who the fuck's running on the anti-family platform? <laughs> who's, who's doing that? Because those would be the greatest campaign rallies of all time. <laughs> Can you imagine how cool those speeches would be from the anti-family candidate? Just imagine, you got some guy or some girl at the podium, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Americans, I just want to say this. You know your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister? Fuck them. Vote for me. Vote for me. Your sister's a slut, your brother's a douche. Let's get it right, America. Come on now. Let's make some changes in 2016. Pro-family is the stupidest. That's like saying, vote for me. I'm pro-happiness. Yeah, I'm pro hugs and kisses. I'm pro hand jobs and finger banging. That's what I'm all about. Just no sex before marriage. I gotta win Georgia. You know, you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out for down there, right? Those are electoral votes that you need. So stupid. Like, I just don't get us right now. I don't. What do people talk about right now with the economy? The debt. I like how the debt is a big issue. I, I, don't, I don't care about it. I don't think it matters. But I, th I think it's hysterical that everyone's like, oh my God, the debt is at $17 trillion. Oh, it didn't scare the shit out of you when it hit a trillion? That didn't scare you? Why is 17 trillion the magic number all of a sudden? It's stupid. It's like, it doesn't matter. Here, I've got proof that it doesn't matter. I'm not sure if anyone here is aware of this, but the United States government has been operating on debt since 1835. That's a fact. We've had a debt since 1835. The debt and deficit are different. The last time the deficit was balanced was 1999. They're different things. But we've had debt since 1835, and we had debt every year up to 1835. That means only one year in this country's history we were debt free. One year. But I'll tell you this, in 1835, they had a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun. They didn't think about the future, they lived for the moment, right? I'm sure there was some nerd off in the corner saying, hey, maybe we should put some money aside. And everyone else was like, hey, fuck you, I just bought a wagon, you know? <laughs> lived for the moment. That's what that generation did. That's what we could do. I'm so sick of politicians saying, oh, we gotta solve the debt and deficit. We don't wanna pass that on to our grandkids. If we don't solve that, our grandkids are gonna have to pay off all our debt. Is it me, or does that not sound like the greatest economic policy of all time? 
That sounds awesome. You mean to tell me I get to spend an ass load of money and my grandkids have to pick up the tab? Beautiful. Sign me up today, America. Better question is this. What kind of selfish piece of shit grandkids are we raising? They don't want to help out Papa and Nana, you know? What kind of little bastards are we raising? They want to flip the bill for their G-rents, right? Call me crazy, but I'd like to picture a paradise, like a perfect world, where if I ever draft my bank account on Jameson shots, I like to think that little Joey the Third is gonna help out his papa. I'd like to think that. And that's right, I'm gonna make my grandchildren call me their papa. I am. I like the way that sounds. Hello, papa. Good day, papa, right? It's classy. It's distinguished. It's just the type of grandfather I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have white hair, thick eyebrows, and I'm gonna tell borderline racist stories, because let's be honest. Let's be honest. Every grandfather, whether they're black or white, has racist stories. And if you're not laughing at that, that's because your grandparents are super racist, and it's hard for you to be honest. It's hard for you to come to grips about your horribly racist past, but I say, own it and move forward. They keep talking about how we owe China over a trillion dollars. It's a fact, we owe China over a trillion dollars. And again, politicians on both sides are like, how do we solve this? Do we raise taxes? Do we cut social programs? What do we do? Well, I have an idea. Here's my plan. Might be a little bold, but here's my thoughts about it. Um, let's just not fucking pay them. How about that? <laughs> let's just dodge that phone call. You know what I mean? It works for me in my life. I owe Best Buy like $900. They call me every day. I just don't answer the goddamn phone. That's what I do. My phone rings, I see an 800 number. I go, ha <laughs> nice try, Best Buy. Click, and I don't answer that shit. And then I take the iPhone I bought from Best Buy and I put it back into my pocket. That's just, I ignore the call. America, we could do this. China calls us up. We see a bunch of Asian symbols on the caller ID. Let that shit go to voicemail, Joe Biden. We know who that is. That is not a fortune cookie, that is an angry nation. Let's just let that one slide. I don't know why I think the vice president would pick up that phone call. I just, he's, there's gotta be more to that job. I think he needs a task, you know? But then people say, oh, you don't wanna mess with China because they have over 10 million soldiers or whatever number I'm making up from Wikipedia, you know? They say, oh, you don't wanna mess with them, they got over 10 million soldiers. Yeah, but they're all like 5'4", we'd win that. We'd, we'd, We'd be fine, we'd win there. We'd like yin back up. You'd just give him a kick to the face and we'd win that one. And if you're Asian and you're offended by that joke, fuck you, you're short, all right? You know you're short. I'm not being a dick, all right? I'm just stating the obvious. Listen, you know, you've got the math skills. You're not tall. Life balances itself out that way, right? You know what I mean? I'm Irish. People think we're charming, but I'm pasty as fuck. It sucks, right? Things even out. You know, Asians aren't tall, but you know, you got all those number skills and stuff. It all evens out. Like black people, you got a shitty history, but you got big dicks, right? It's kind of, it all evens out, you know? Slavery, huge cock. I would definitely debate that one in my head for a little bit. Oh, trust me, Asian guys would give up calculus for a few extra inches of pipe, okay? They would, they would. I'm not just putting that out there. It's very true. Things even out somewhat, you know? They, life's a balancing act, it really is. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's time for a, a woman president. I'd be cool with that. It's very quiet here. You guys are showing, <laughs> you're showing you totally don't agree with me. That's great. I'm looking at some women who are like, ooh, I don't know about that. Like, us, us, you think us? No, I think, I think, yeah, why not? I think women would be great. I do. I'd be happy to vote for a woman. I, I feel bad for women nowadays though, because I feel like you ladies are put under a lot of pressure, like pressure to be beautiful more so than ever. You know, with Photoshop and all that stuff, you see these magazine covers saying this is what a woman's body should be, this is what a woman's body should look like, like Victoria's Secret ads, it's crazy. And this is why young girls get eating disorders. That's awful, you know? So I wanna speak on behalf of people everywhere when I say this. Ladies, do not listen to that shit. Don't listen to it. Be proud of your bodies. Be happy with your bodies because there is nothing sexier than a woman with confidence. Am I right? There is nothing <laughs> sexier than a woman with confidence. That and a flat stomach. So if you could just, <laughs> could just bring those two together. You're golden pony boy. You just want to combine those two, you're aces. That's just how. 
I love it when a woman starts to agree with me and she's like, hey, fuck you, you switched it on me. I was with you and then you made it bad. No, no, no. Like women who come up to me after a show going, ah, oh, it's really hard, I had a baby. It's really hard, uh, you know. It's like, yeah, your kid's in college. Let's stop with the excuses. Okay, let's just, let's just move on from that. But you're doing great, you know. I actually consider myself a feminist. I do, believe it or not, I consider myself a feminist. I believe in the feminist principles. The only problem I think the feminist movement is having is that they just don't stick to their core principles. Because every guy should be on board with feminism. We all should be. You know, because you might, yeah, you might want to have, you might have a daughter one day, and you're going to want your daughter to have the same rights as a son. You know, so we should all be on board with it because the feminist, the principles, like the core of feminism is that they want equality politically, economically, socially. Who wouldn't be on board with that? We'd all be on board with that. But the problem is, here's where feminists lose the average guy. They tend to get a little off message. <laughs> feminists will start saying stuff like, why is it a cheerleader in the NFL only makes like $20,000 a year, but a quarterback like Tom Brady makes like 20 million, huh, huh? I don't know, has a cheerleader ever thrown for 400 fucking yards in a game? Has that ever happened? <laughs> Anybody drafting a cheerleader for their fantasy football leagues? No, they're not making the money, sorry. The Chicago Bears don't even have cheerleaders, okay? They're selling out games regardless. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to say is the feminist movement is really lacking strong male leadership. That's really what it needs. <laughs> you know, just, just put, some, put some men in charge. Let, let us take over, right? Let us do it and you'll be fine. We'll get you where you gotta go, okay? Just sit back and then, you know. I love that joke, I'm just gonna let you know. <laughs> It's both positive and negative all at the same time. <laughs> Poor women. I, I, again, though, I am man enough to admit that women are smarter than men. I am I'm man enough to admit that. I am. Not a lot of people are. You don't have to clap for that. That's fine. I am because but a lot of guys, whenever I say that, there's a lot of guys who are like, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. If women are so smart, why do they rely on us to do so much work? Huh? Huh? Why do they rely on us to do so much work? Yeah, that's part of the genius, actually. <laughs> that's pretty smart on their end. Yeah. You're lugging concrete, they're watching Netflix. Who's winning that war? Yeah, exactly, good call. We women are smart, you, your brains just work differently. I can't even argue with a woman anymore. You can't argue with women. Every argument I get into with a woman ends with me screaming the phrase, you know what I meant. <laughs> Everyone, I have to scream, you know what I meant at the end of the argument because usually you've switched my words around so much I have no idea what I originally fucking meant. And I'm hoping you'll give me context clues so I can get back on message. <laughs> so I can get my point across. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. You women, like you remember everything and then you have this ability of just switching one or two words around. It's almost like if I don't audibly say comma after a word, it just changes everything. <laughs> it's like, no, no, you said this. And I'm always like, oh fuck, did I say that? Jesus Christ, I'm an asshole. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. It's amazing how your brains, your brains are an almanac of every fight that's ever taken place ever. You could do that, you go right back, you're like, no, you said this on June 6th about my best friend. That's what you said, I know, I know, I logged it away in my files, you said this about her. How do you remember a fight from four years ago, but I still have to explain the rules of football to you? How does that work? <laughs> the fuck does that work? Oh yeah, I told you you look stupid six years ago, but you still don't know what encroachment means. Okay, <laughs> sure, that adds up. You ladies remember everything. That's why every courtroom stenographer you know, the person in charge of writing down every single word that is being said? Only a woman could have that job. <laughs> Only a woman could have the job of writing down every single word that is being said in a conversation. No man could have that job. Could you imagine if a guy was in charge of that? The judge would be like, could you read back the witness's testimony? He'd be like, I don't fucking know, I don't know. <laughs> You got me, all right? You got me. I've been staring out that window for like four and a half hours. I have no idea what's going on. I'm gonna take a shit then clock out. Are we good? Could I, could I just, could I wash my hands of this situation? Sorry, your honor, right? <laughs> Stupid, that's all. So the gays, how about them? It's a great transition, right? No, I'm pro-gay. I got a lot of gay friends. It's ridiculous to me that in 2014, they're still fighting for some rights. That's stupid. I just don't know who gives a shit still. 
No, I just, it's like with the gay rights. It just makes no sense, you know, just because a few people think it's weird, they don't like it, whatever. Like, I love gay people, but I'm not one of those people that is, like, overly supportive. You know, there's some people just overly supportive. Like, I'll vote for what I got to vote for, you know what I mean? But there's some people, because it's not true equality when you're overly supportive. There are some people who are like, gay people are the best. Gay people are awesome. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Some gay people are awesome. Just like some straight people are awesome. But they're still people, so most of them suck. Isn't that the deal with people? I don't care if you lick or blow, you're probably an asshole like most of us, right? That's just, we're not good people, right? I don't care what your sexual preference is. You're not amazing just for, you know, you like dick, all of a sudden you walk on water, no. Oh, they're the best. Oh, come on. I'm sure there's one that goes home and beats the shit out of his partner, right? There's got to be one that litters and just, you know, comes home and is like, you didn't clean up Michael and just starts punching him. <laughs> like how I said Michael and not like Jeremy, some bullshit name that comedians like to use for gay guys. You know, a lot of gay guys named Chris and Dave, okay? Just letting you know there's, there's other names out there instead of Steven and all that shit. <laughs> Hack comedians. I, um, I want to tell you guys a coming of age story. Talk about racism a little bit. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Ferguson, huh? I am not going to vacation there. I don't think that sounds like a nice place. Um, no, I'm not, I, I, I don't, I, uh, I, I'm not gonna end my set by talking about the most divisive thing of the last 30 years. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Some of you were like, Jesus Christ, he's gonna go to Ferguson right now? Wow. Although it was fun finding out how many of our friends were racist on Facebook. That was fun, huh? Wow. They just came right out and said it, didn't they? Holy shit. It used to be you had to get like, your friends drunk to find out who was racist. Now you just log in and they'll just tell you right away. They'll just tell you. Look, I don't know. Like, I wasn't there. I try to be an honest person. I like to take both sides into case. But like, Darren Wilson might have very well felt threatened and it might have gone down the way he did, but I still don't buy the part of the story where he shot Michael Brown twice and then Michael Brown sprinted after him. Yeah. What is he, fucking Wolverine, Michael Brown? How the fuck? He takes two bullets, he's like, ah, his claws came out, he went after the guy, I don't understand that. And even if it did happen that way, look, we could all admit I'm pro-cop, I got a ton of cop friends, there's a lot of great cops out there. Some that are fucking terrible, but like any other job, you know, there's a lot of idiot, I'm a comedian, I'm sometimes a prick, right? There's a lot of bad ones out there. But at least as cops, you gotta admit that Darren Wilson was a fucking not a great cop. He shot him six times, but he fired 12 shots. You will not win the Marksmanship Award in GoldenEye. He's not gonna win that. Six for 12? Oh my God, you're like the worst fuck was, and he's not, and Michael Brown was a big target. He was an odd job. Why could he not shoot him better, right? Yes, GoldenEye 64 references from my comedy album. Yeah, Chris Rock doesn't talk about GoldenEye 64. Louis C.K. is afraid to talk about it. I'm gonna tell you, you all a coming of age story. I'm gonna tell you the story about the first time I met black people. Now, I grew up in the city of Chicago, the third biggest city in the United States of America. I travel a lot. I've done comedy from coast to coast all over the place, big town, small town, all over the place. And a lot of people will say to me, you're from Chicago. That's amazing. That must have been great to grow up like, where all these cultures come together, you know, all different walks of life where they all come together. And I'm like, what the fuck, Chicago, have you read about? Because <laughs> that is not the case at all, right? We all know it's very segregated. I grew up here, I grew up on the Northwest side. I love it there, it's great. You know, it was, it was, my neighbor was a little diverse, I guess. It's like 40% Hispanic, 30% Polish, and then the rest like regular white people like me. Right, you know? <laughs> it was great though, it was a good upbringing, you know? But I didn't meet black people until I was nine years old. But again, like I'd heard horrible things about black people. Cause again, I grew up in a very blue collar neighborhood, which blue collar is just code for racist as fuck. <laughs> that's, that's what that is. And so I'd heard horrible things about black people. Now my parents divorced and my dad worked on the south side for the Chicago Park District. Now he would take me to work for him because it was just easier, you know, you didn't have to get a babysitter. And I loved it because I was nine years old. So I got to play basketball all day long, shoot hoops. I'm in a gym, it's a park, it's fucking awesome. So here I am, little nine-year-old Joey, shooting hoops by himself, working on my game, just learning basketball for the first time. When nine 17-year-old black guys walked into the gym. There was nine of them, they're all about 17, 18 years old. They come into the gym, they want to play a full court game of basketball. 
But we all know you can't play full court with nine guys. You need 10. You need an even 10. So the main dude, the main dude comes up to me. He's like, yo, white boy. Yo, white boy, you want to play basketball? You want to roll with us? You want to roll with us, white boy? I'm like, roll with you. Are you asking me to join your gang? Because I'll join your gang. Let's talk about that shit. I may be not, but I'm looking for upward mobility. Let's talk about joining this gang. I'm, I'm down. Let's talk about it, my brother. Let's do this. He's like, no, white boy, you crazy. You crazy. You want to play basketball with us? I'm like, okay, well, let me just get this straight. Basketball first, gang banging later. I just want to get the schedule down. Okay, I'm very punctual. You'll find that to be an asset in this gang. I just want to let you know. Okay? It's like, you fucking crazy. So we go to play the game. Right when we're about to start, the guy who's guarding me is real cool. Nicest dude. He said, listen, I'm going to let you get some shots off. We're just here to have some fun. Don't worry about it. I don't want you freaking out and stuff. We're just going to have a good time. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. Such a nice guy. Very first play of the game, my point guard catches me on the wing, sees me wide open, kicks me the ball. I catch the boy, ball. Again, but I'm a fucking nine-year-old. I don't want to play basketball. So I catch him. like, oh, shit, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He's like, shoot it, white boy, shoot it. So I fucking just chuck it up randomly, like terrible form, just chuck it up. <laughs> Guess what? I scored. I fucking scored. That's right, yeah. I banked it. They gave me shit for not calling glass. But still, it went in, right? It went in. And everyone on my team was fucking jacked up. Like, yeah, fucking little white boy right here. Look at this fucking little white boy. Everyone on the other team was pissed. They were giving their guy shit. Like, you just let a white boy score on you. The fuck is wrong with you? Little white boy just scored on your ass. Little Opie Taylor just scored on your motherfucking ass. Little Opie Taylor. And my only thought was, what are a bunch of 17 year old black kids doing watching the Andy Griffith show? That's a weird, that's a, that's a weird reference for a bunch of high school black kids. I mean, that show is on in reruns very early in the morning. I don't know, uh, they're getting up that early to watch reruns of the Andy Griffith show? It's weird. So we go back on the court, we make a defensive stop, we're coming right back up the court. Again, I got a great point guard, you know, he's coming up, he does a little fake, he kicks me the ball. This time I catch it with confidence, I step back, good form, swish, <laughs> fucking swish. Everybody's fucking going nuts now, right? Everyone on my team is like, we got Larry Bird on our goddamn team. That's motherfucking Larry Bird on our team. We got Larry Legend in this motherfucker, how about that shit? All the other guys are like, you are not black, what the fuck is wrong with you? You let that motherfucker just go on you? What the fuck is wrong with you? They're just losing their mind, right? I'm doing the crip walk, right? I'm having a fucking good time, you know? Fucking invented that shit. It wasn't even around back then. I'm a pioneer. Having a great time. Come back up the court. We make another defense step. As we're coming up, the guy who I just scored on twice, he's pissed. He stops me. He says, listen, little white boy. I just gave you two freebies. You just got two freebies, okay? You try to shoot that ball again, son, I'm going to fucking stuff you. I'm gonna fucking stuff you, son. Don't you try to shoot that fucking ball again. You notice how I didn't blink? Neither did he. Yeah, it's fucking frightening. So I responded by saying, I apologize, sir. I did not realize the circumstances of this game. I did not mean to upset you. I will not be shooting the rock as you called it again. I'm sorry. Let's just go back to me becoming a GD because I want to fucking deal with that. Let's just, let's just hash that out. Let's come up with a game plan, right? I'm sorry again. So we come up. Again, I got this point guard. He's a great point guard. He wants to feed the hot hand. He does a couple moves to the inside. Looks like he's going for a laugh. Just fucking kicks the ball right back out to me. Right when I catch it, I look up. The dude is already in air to block me. Already in air. He's fucking way up here. Fucking balls above my head. Just fucking casting a shadow. Casting a shadow over the gym. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Holy shit. But then listen, everyone. I grew up watching Michael Jordan. I know how to create a shot. So I take one dribble to the side, I fade, I fire, I fucking score. It is fucking crazy. Everybody loses their mind, right? Everyone on my team is like, he's NBA Jam on fire now, motherfuckers. That's right. He's got flame on that basketball. He's NBA Jam on fire, motherfuckers. Everyone on the other team was just like, this is fucking bullshit. We go crazy. They put me up on their shoulders like we just won the NBA championship, right? We start cutting down the net, which was crazy because we had a lot more game to play. I don't know why we're cutting down. It was fucking three to nothing. I don't know why we were cutting down the net, right? But the only thought in my head was this. Black people are awesome. This is the most fun I've ever had in my goddamn life. This is crazy. Who are these crackers on the north side talking shit about my teammates, right? Moral of that story is every nine-year-old deserves nine 17-year-old black guys, and we will fucking be a better country for it, right? Cops and protesters hugging, come together through the fucking desire of sport. It's amazing. I like talking about sex at the end of my set, though. I do. I feel like sex, sex and comedy go together. Get the endorphins going, you're feeling good. In particular, I like to talk about oral sex. I think oral sex is the best. It is. I like getting it. I like receiving it. I love oral sex, right? 
What? What? Oh, no, I know what I said, okay? My one problem with oral sex is this. I don't like the fact that anything a girl does to a guy has the word job in the title. I don't like that. Hand job, blow job. That's bullshit, ladies. Okay, that's bullshit. Going down on a guy should be called like a blow layup. All right, it's easy. You're all amazing. You're all batting a thousand at it, you know? Like even if a girl's bad at it, she's still getting the job done. I had a guy, I had one of my guy friends talk to me and he was like, dude, this girl gave me the worst head ever. She was a biter, she was a scraper, dry mouth, sandpaper tongue like a cat. Terrible, <laughs> terrible head. And I'm like, did you still come? He's like, yeah, I just had to focus a little bit harder. I just, sort of just, I just had to concentrate, you know? But I, I got there, yeah, sure. Does that happen with women? No, we're not batting as high an average, right? How many of you women have tapped a guy on the shoulder going, what the fuck are you doing? Were you chewing? Did I hear chewing? Jesus Christ. Get the fuck out of here. How many of you ladies that had to tap the lefty in from the bullpen, AKA your vibrator just said, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna rock this solo because I don't know what the hell you were doing. Blow job. Going down on a woman should have job in the title. That should be called like an eating out job, an EJ, right? We should call that an EJ. Or maybe a CJ, a clit job perhaps, right? That sounds better. Wouldn't that be great if women talk like that? Like you're hanging out with your gal pals and you're like, you know what I could use tonight? A glass of red and a CJ. That's what I could use tonight. I've had a day. I have had a day. I could really use that. Here's what makes going down on a woman difficult for us men. Here's what makes going down on a woman difficult, because we all want to be rock stars down there, right? We all want to be amazing. But what makes the process tougher for us is that there's really only one position, and it's this whole, my neck's going to break in two fucking minutes. Ow, ow, that's my fucking ow position, right? This whole, like, like you know, your neck, you got the nerves going, it hurts so bad, right? I don't know how you ladies don't look down at us being like, Jesus Christ, that looks really uncomfortable. That looks... Wow, your neck is bent like a pretzel. That looks really weird. Oh, man, that's horrible. And do you ladies help us? Do you help us? No, you don't help us. Us guys, we help you. Guys are always helping women. Why do you think we're always touching your head? Huh? Why do you think we're always grabbing your head and your hair and shit? A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Just don't worry about your fucking hair. A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. I got this slower, faster, slower, faster, right? Like, we give a shit. We're trying to help you. Do you ladies help us? No, no, here's what you do instead. You bang your thighs off our ears every time we hit the spot. You ever have that, fellas? You ever hit that spot that makes her go crazy and she fucking butterfly aerobics is off your goddamn dome? You ever have that? Oh, that's real nice. Thank you for smacking the shit out of my eardrums as I'm trying to lick the smallest part of the human body. Thank you for that. You realize the clit is like the size of the edge of your pinky, right? It's very tiny. I'm trying to lick it with speed and accuracy and you're just fucking caving it in, caving it in, grabbing the back of my head, shoving me closer. Are you trying to give me birth in reverse? What the fuck is that move? Why are you trying to suck me inward? Yeah, thanks for making my ears ring. That feels great. I'm in a dark room, I can't see, I can't hear. I'm like fucking Helen Keller going down on you. I got no control of my senses. It's not fun. It's all about the angles. Seriously, try going down on a girl in the back of your minivan. Almost impossible. There's not a good angle for it. Even if you open up the dual sliding doors, which I have, there's just no, just no angles. It hurts. It's very, you know. I had a girl come up to me after a show once and say, Joe, there's more than one position, Joe. Here's what you could do the next time you go down on a woman. Take a bunch of pillows, put them underneath the small of the woman's back, prop her up a little bit, give yourself a better angle. Yeah, you should try that. I then said to her, what kind of freak carries pillows in his minivan? That's weird. That is fucking weird. Imagine that, lady. Some guy opens up his sliding van door, there's a bunch of pillows arranged. Hard pillow in the middle to show he cares, right? Just a bunch of pillows. That might make you run, you know? Another woman came up to me and said, Joe, you know about the other position, Joe. Here's what you could do. You could have the woman sit on your face. Yeah, you ever have a girl sit on your face, Joe? Well, I have. Yeah, I have. And let me just say this. I'm not a fucking lizard, okay? 
That's a very tough angle. I'm not a gecko. That's a very tough angle on the tongue. You got to curl it upwards if you really want to hit that spot. All right, it's a little weird. And what makes matters even more complicated is while the girl is sitting on your face, every time she shifts her weight ever so slightly, you feel a little bit of air. Yeah. Every time she moves a little bit, you just feel a little bit of air, and your brain starts to freak the fuck out. You're like, why the fuck did I just feel air? Why did I feel air? Did she just silent fart on my chin? This chick just silent fart on my chin. Get the fuck off my face, silent farter. Get the fuck off my face. It was crazy. The first time it happened to me, I had a goatee, so it felt like wind through tall grass. It was just, <laughs> hey, you guys were so much fun. Thank you very much. I'm Joe Kilgallen. Thank you, guys. Have a great night.